we continue with our exploration of painters' brush controls. You've seen that dab type, stroke type, method, and subcategory have the greatest influence on the behavior, the personality of a brush variant. There are other variables, many of them, depending on the variant you're working with. Some of these will be relevant and some not. There is an amazing item in Painter X3 that will allow you to automatically load the control panels that are relevant to the current brush. Extremely handy if you're working with this static bristle brush, for example, dry ink, that's the dab type. We see here the static bristle controls, among others as well. Let's work with the group of settings under static bristle. Here's the stroke with the default settings. Notice the dab preview and stroke preview as I make these changes. Let's reduce thickness and notice that each bristle has become thinner. We have now a very light and airy stroke. Let's make the thickness very high and now we see there is a blobby look that reduces or eliminates the spaces between and among bristles and so we have lost any of that bristly effect. Let's reset the tool and go to, well let's go to another color as well. Let's go to a red and explore clumpiness. Clumpiness by default shows some variety in size among the bristles. Reducing clumpiness gives us almost the same size for each bristle. Increasing clumpiness will make for the maximum change in size, and that gives us a little bit more of a chunky, rough look, so I kind of like that, but I'll return to the initial setting. Hair scale, and as I reduce the hair scale, I'm getting more and more hairs, even though they are thinner. And what that looks like is a much finer, more delicate kind of stroke. And I will, once again, reset that tool. Looking down a bit to some variables in the well group, well includes resaturation and bleed. Let us reduce resaturation and increase bleed and see what happens. What we get is a kind of smeary brush that applies a certain amount of the current color, but also drags the underlying cover around. This is a kind of an interesting brush you could put into your blenders category. And let's do that. Let's go to the pop-up menu from your brush selector and save the variant. I'll save it as dry ink smeary and put it in the blenders category and save. Okay, let's just check to see if it got to its destination. Blenders and dry ink smeary. There it is. Okay, I'm going to clear the canvas and turn to a different variant, the Syrah brush from the artist's group. Let's make sure we have that at its original setting. And notice that a different collection of control panels has appeared for us. We have some of the usual suspects. Resaturation and bleed applies to most brushes. But here we are going to look at making changes to a circular dab type. You can see that individual circular dab in the preview, and you can see that the stroke preview shows you you have a scattering of these little individual dots, and there is also some color variability. If we look at color variability way down here, we see that there is 7% hue variability, 15% value variability. You can make changes to that, of course. But let's take a look at the dab profile. This applies to a circular dab. The dab profile, shown here in blue, indicates that most of the pigment will be deposited in the center of the dab, and then it will gradually fall off or dissipate. Let's make for an increase in size so you can see that more clearly. We'll go back to dab profile. And as you can see, this is kind of a soft edged dab. I can make it a hard edged dab by choosing this profile, which shows us very clearly that a dab profile can have a tremendous influence. 
Let's look at this profile, which is called watercolor profile because watercolor strokes tend to have the pigment building out at the edge or building up at the edge. So we'll return to our default profile and that is what we expect to see with the Syrah brush. Let's look at spacing, but first let's return to the original setting. Now, if I decrease spacing, then I've got more dots per inch, let's say. If I increase spacing, then these dots are going to be more spread out. That makes a great deal of sense as well. Now, how do we influence the degree of scatter? We'll go down here to the stroke panel, and we see that stroke jitter, and Painter defines jitter as variability. Stroke jitter is up at the maximum by default. Well, let's return to the original setting for spacing and whatnot. And I'll just clear everything so we can see. Okay, default stroke. Stroke jitter reduced to, say, about halfway. And sure enough, they are clumping more towards the center of the stroke line. Minimum or no stroke jitter. And as you might expect, and you can see in your stroke preview, all of the dots have now fallen into line, quite literally. And so we now just have a color variation in a straight line. Let's return to the initial settings. And you have now seen how you can basically reverse engineer any given brush and make it do whatever you wish it to do. We'll continue with our explorations in the next movie, creating custom variants and looking at brush search.